This is one of my favourite books. It's called Melrick, the Magician Who Lost His Magic and it's by David McKee. Melrick was the king's magician. Every day he carried out the king's orders. If the king wanted to swim, Melrick made the sun come out. If the king was too hot, Melrick made the sun go in. When he wasn't working for the king, Melrick helped everybody else, all by magic. Melrick was always busy. No one else was busy at all. So look, he's mending someone's shoe. And he's fixing someone's toothache, I think. Filling a basket with apples. Making bread. Making food. Fixing toys. And fixing weapons. morning, Melrick woke up late. He muttered the spell that should have washed and dressed him and made his bed. But nothing happened. He said the spell again, louder. Nothing happened. He shouted the spell and still nothing happened. In a great hurry, because the king didn't like to be kept waiting, Melrick dressed himself, making a terrible mess of it. He took one look at the bed and left it unmade. The king was angry with Melrick for being late. Come along, Melrick, he said. I want this room painted. After that, there's a crowd outside and they all want things done. Melrick tried and tried and tried the spells for painting rooms, but nothing happened. Gradually, everybody realised what the trouble was. Melrick's magic was gone. What shall we do? said the king. Our enemies will attack us when they hear your magic cannot defeat them. Perhaps my sister Myrtle can help, suggested Melrick. I'll go and see her at once. So much going on in the pictures in this book. I love it. Look at all this. As the people began to realise that Melrick couldn't help them, they tried to do things for themselves. Things they hadn't done for ages. There was trouble everywhere. Even the simplest things went wrong. Poor Melrick left feeling very sad that he was of no use. So look. There's somebody trying to fire an arrow and instead of firing the arrow, he's fired the bow. And there's someone trying to fish in the moat, but he's caught a saucepan. Somebody's trying to mend a chair. Somebody's trying to get some water out of the well, but they're managing to pump it into somebody else's face. <laughs> um, oh no, look, this lady's made her dinner catch fire. And this poor man's fallen off a ladder. And he's hit his thumb. Oh dear. So Melrick left. Not very happy because he wasn't helping anybody. Usually when Melrick wanted to go on a journey, he travelled by magic. This time he had to walk. All along the way, he passed people trying to do things they hadn't attempted for years. Melrick hurried on, hoping his sister Myrtle could help him so that he could help everybody else. Let's see if we can find him. There's lots of people doing things wrong, look. So they're trying to do some ploughing and the plough's gone all over the place. The horse has run off. Someone flying a kite, but they've got somebody else attached to the end of the kite. People falling off the castle. People trying to thatch the roof that they're doing really badly. Cows are all running away. Look, they're running after the farmer. 
trees are falling on people. And there's Melrick off on his journey. So Melrick hurried on, hoping his sister Myrtle could help him so that he could help everybody else. Myrtle lived under an old tree in the forest. So you have to climb down the ladder through the old tree. Yeah, there's the bunnies in, the, in their burrow. And there's Malric. And there's Myrtle. And that's where she lives. By the time Melrick arrived there, he was exhausted. Myrtle listened to her brother's story. She tried a few spells, but they were useless. She made him drink an evil tasting brew, but even that did not bring back his magic. At last, she said, I can't help you. Go and see Cousin Gus, the wizard. You can borrow one of my spare broomsticks to take you to the island. Melrick said goodbye and flew off, grateful at least not to be walking. Melrick liked visiting Gus. Gus kept strange pets and would often change the shape or size of the island just for fun. Gus was pleased to see Melrick, but as soon as he heard the sad story, he realised there would be no time for fun. Gus was a first-class wizard and set to work immediately with his strongest spells. In spite of the wonderful bangs and flashes galore, Melric remained as unmagic as ever. There's no choice, sighed Gus. You will just have to visit the wise Kra. He can do anything. I'll get you to the bottom of his mountain by magic, but you'll have to climb the rest of the way. Kra's own magic stops people from dropping in. Gus sprinkled Melric with magic powder and in a flash, Melric left the island. Flash. Whee! The spell landed Melric at the foot of the mountain. From there, he had to puff and pant his way up. He knew that Crow would see him, but would not lift a finger to help. When at last Malric arrived at the top, he told Crow his story. You are stupid, said the old man. You just wasted your magic instead of helping people. What? Melrick almost shouted. I've always helped people. I've done everything for them. That's just the trouble, said Kra. You taught them to rely on you. And when you fail them, they can't do a thing for themselves. That's not helping them. Melrick didn't utter a word. Then the wise Kra said, This time I'll give you back your magic. But if you waste it again... It may be lost forever. Melric's toes and fingers tingled. He knew his magic was back. Thank you, sir, he said. Now I must fly. And he changed into a bird and headed for home. As he flew, he passed over Gus and then over Myrtle. They recognised him, even though he was a bird, and waved happily, happy to see that he had his magic back. When Melric reached the castle, he found that the king's enemies had launched a big attack. They had heard that the magician had lost his magic and had wasted no time in seizing the castle. This is a good time for a spell, thought Melric. Look at all those 
arrow is flying towards the castle. The big bird landed on a turret and changed into a magician. He held out his hands and the air was filled with green light. In a few seconds, all the enemy soldiers were changed into black cats. Open the doors, called Melric. Our dogs can chase them home. They'll change back when they get there. The king start oh look there's all the dogs chasing the cats home the king started to thank Melric but he was promptly surrounded by a crowd of people Melric mend my chair called one and then all the rest of them started asking Melric to do things everything was back to normal or so the people thought Melric raised his hand and called for silence in the future, you must manage without me, he said. Magic will only be used on very special occasions. Now off you go, as I shall be very busy. For the rest of the day, everyone went happily about their business. And Melric? Melric? had to learn to make his bed. There you go. And that was Melric, the magician who lost his magic. And I have loved that book since I was a little child like you. I look forward to seeing all of your favourite books at some point today. Enjoy World Book Day. Have a lot of fun. Okay, bye.